Hey guys, Sean here. Welcome to the F1 Word and to a quick update on the situation regarding the 2020 Formula 1 season. Now, we already knew that the first four races of the season had been officially postponed. They were, of course, Australia, Bahrain, Vietnam and China. And the statement confirming that those races wouldn't go ahead initially said that the season would not start until the end of May at the earliest. And that pretty much all but ruled out the chances of the Dutch and Spanish Grand Prix going ahead. And there were big question marks as well around the Monaco Grand Prix. In fact, actually earlier this week, the Monaco Grand Prix organisers were still expecting the race to take place as scheduled. However, it's more bad news, I'm afraid. Unsurprising, but still bad news. This afternoon, the FIA and Formula One released a joint statement, finally confirming the races at Zandvoort and Barcelona were off for now. And they also confirmed that Monaco would not be going ahead as planned either. The joint statement, I will read it, said the following. In view of the continued global spread of COVID-19 and after ongoing discussions with Formula One and the three promoters, it has today been confirmed that the Dutch, Spanish and Monaco Grand Prix will be postponed. Due to the ongoing and fluid nature of the COVID-19 situation globally, Formula One and the three promoters have taken these decisions in order to ensure the health and safety of the travelling staff, championship participants and fans, which remains our primary concern. The FIA and Formula One continue to work closely with affected promoters and local authorities to monitor the situation and take the appropriate amount of time to study the viability of potential alternative dates for each Grand Prix later in the year should the situation improve. The FIA and Formula One expect to begin the 2020 championship season as soon as it is safe to do so after May and will continue to regularly monitor the ongoing COVID-19 situation. So then, as things stand, the season would start in Baku on June the 7th. However, given how rapidly this whole situation is evolving, that is by no means any kind of guarantee whatsoever. In fact, I personally would be very surprised, pleasantly surprised, but surprised nevertheless, if we see any racing this side of the summer break. Or what would have been the summer break anyway, so August. We've had a number of sporting events pushing things back to September, one of those of course being the Le Mans 24 hours, and so I would not be at all surprised if Formula One went the same way. That is obviously just a gut feeling based on how things are across the world right now, and I must stress, I really hope I'm wrong with that one. It's not looking good though, I think we can all agree on that one, and us F1 fans are going to have to prepare ourselves for an even longer wait than perhaps we initially expected. Of course, there are absolutely far more important things going on in the world right now, but as fans, it's still gutting that we don't have even a little bit of racing to look forward to, to at least try and take our minds off this horrible situation at the moment. Everything's all doom and gloom, and it would be great, wouldn't it? Just have a race, just something to look forward to and take our minds off it. But again, far more important things going on right now in the world. The decision taken today is totally understandable in my view, and it is actually a sensible decision as well. And I've not really got much else to say on this other than what I've said in other videos. Like I say, just a shame, but given the original end of May statement, it's not at all a surprise. In other news around this season, or year actually, the season's not started yet, Sean. Anyway, in other news regarding this year, it was announced yesterday that teams have agreed to bring the summer break forward to, well, basically now, which would in turn allow Formula One to utilise that usual August shutdown to potentially squeeze some more of the postponed races back onto a revised calendar. A calendar that Ross Braun, by the way, still thinks that we can get 17 or 18 races into. Not so sure myself, but we'll keep an eye on it. Simply put, rather than shutting down for two weeks in August, the teams will have to shut down everything for 21 consecutive days. So it's been extended as well as moved and must have done so by the end of April. And according to the information released, the changes to the break were supported unanimously by both the F1 Strategy Group and F1 Commission. That is not all that's happened so far this week, though. According to reports, Formula One have agreed to postpone the introduction of the new 2021 regulations until the 2022 season, so pushing them back a year. As I'm sure you all know by now, we were set to see a huge raft of changes put in place next year to try to close up the field both in terms of racing and financially, and hopefully give us all a little bit more action on track as well. However, given that we have already lost seven races from the calendar this year, and we could, let's face it, lose more yet, teams and indeed the sport are set to take a big financial hit this year. There are also big concerns over the global financial markets and what impact that could have on the sport and the teams. Now, initially, this was agreed by nine of the 10 teams with Ferrari wanting to take a little bit of time to think it over, but it appears as though they have accepted the proposals. 
As Mattia Bonotto himself said in an interview that was released earlier, it is certainly not the time for selfishness and tactics. That's a quote, by the way, from Bonotto himself. And I have to agree with him. They've got to stick together as a sport through all of this. Big teams and small teams alike. Anyway, the key points of this delay are that the teams will continue to follow the 2020 rules for a further season and they would freeze things such as the chassis and gearbox. It's a way to try and keep costs down. They would then have to develop their 2022 cars to the rules that were originally going to be introduced next year, but they would have to develop them under the cost cap because that will be staying in place. So teams are going to have to build a brand spanking new car from the ground up with all these new regulations while sticking to that $175 million cost cap. And frankly, that's something that should have been the case anyway. So out of all of this, maybe that's a bit of a positive. Your big teams are still going to spend every penny of that and your smaller teams are going to spend less, but it's still better than a Williams spending, let's say, 75 million and Red Bull spending 500 million or whatever. I must say we are still waiting official word on how this will all take shape, but they are the basics according to reports. I'm sat here editing my audio and guess what? As is the case with everything at the moment, we have more news. I feel like saying breaking news, but if you're watching this three weeks down the line, it really isn't. But anyway, the FIA have now confirmed, it is official, that following, as I said earlier, unanimous agreement between the FIA, Formula One and all the teams, the 2021 regulations are being postponed until 2022. The statement goes on to say, I won't read it by the way, but it basically talks about what I was talking about there, the volatile financial situation and the impact it could have on the team. So that is why they're going ahead with this decision. But a key line here, it has been agreed that teams will use their 2020 chassis for 2021 with the potential freezing of further components to be discussed in due course. They have also confirmed that the implementation of the financial regulation, so the cost cap, will go ahead as planned in 2021. So they are going to be developing these new cars under that cost cap. Very sensible decision. The statement does also go on to say that all teams express their support for the FIA and Formula One in their ongoing efforts to restructure the 2020 calendar. Not a great surprise in that statement. So there we go, all officially confirmed now. But I think this is a good call, a smart call. Yeah, we wanted to see those awesome looking cars next year, didn't we? But you know, I would rather wait an extra year and see 10 teams take to the track in 2022 than have those new cars but only 8 teams on the grid. Genuinely, although I would hope that all possible steps to safeguard these smaller teams are being taken, I do still fear for the likes of Williams, for example. At least by pushing the regulations back one year and making teams develop that car under the cost cap, there is a better chance of all 10 teams surviving. It's about the bigger picture, like I say, sticking together. But anyway, that is it for this news update. In short, no racing until June at the earliest. The teams are all shutting down for three weeks and the 2021 regulations are on hold. As ever, you can let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comment section down below. And when do you think the 2020 season will finally get going, if at all? Do you think we're going to have a full year without racing? Let me know what you think. Now, I will be back soon with more content as ever. But in the meantime, don't forget that you can, of course, follow me over on social media. And all of the links you need for that are in the description down below. But as ever, thank you for watching and hopefully I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye bye.